The Jim and Terry Show coming to you after breakfast on the deck. A lovely day. Well, it was good in the morning. A little muggy. Maybe it's going to get hot. It's going to be hot, I think, today. It was it was actually perfect on the deck. But you come over and first thing in the morning, so it's still nice and cool. There was a breeze. Terry had prepared for me a, number one, carrots and apples sliced, a nice hot coffee, an omelet on top of what kind of bread? Uh, it was artis- artisanal bread, but it's a sourdough kind. Yeah, it was nice. And it was very, very good. And I ate it all. I, w- I want you to point that out. <laughs> it was only because I will I, not be offended uh, whether you eat it or no, not. It was delicious. I just prepare it. So I had a great, a great breakfast. So thank you, Terry, very much for that. And we spent an hour talking about various things. Before we go down to the Hobbit Hole and Before we and came down to the Hobbit record. Hole and we recorded a couple of shows. And so now it is Terry's turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did cover some interesting things today, uh, only because they're things that are familiar. Canadian comedians, Canadian actors, yeah. the impact of Canadians on Americans or lack thereof. We don't leave an impression at all. But to tie up one loose end, that you told me something that you saw where an American did not know the technological contributions that Canada made to the U.S. space program. Had no idea. He was blown away and very kindly blown away. I, I yes. mean, I, appreci- I appreciated his show. He was just letting other Americans know that, wow, this Canada, these are all the first they did, and they, you know, they invented this, and they were the first to do that, and various things, and famous uh, uh, astronauts that he went, I didn't know he was Canadian. <laughs> that guy's great. I didn't know he was Canadian, you know. And uh, so they, I don't think they pay as much attention to us as we do to them, for sure. Yeah, and I think in that case, the old adage, size matters, yeah. is the governing principle. Yeah. We are concerned about them because, and I'll swing it into a political gear, Trudeau said, and this is the elder Trudeau, Pierre, who said being next to the United States is like being in bed with an elephant. No matter how kindly the intentions of the beast, we feel every twitch and turn. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's true. true. And and, and that's just a fact of life. So let's take it over to the political realm then and just say we are feeling the twitches and turns of American because in Ottawa this week, Tamara Leach and... uh, Chris Barber, I believe, are the two who are on trial. It's our mm, trucker protest trials equivalent. It was the freedom protest. The freedom protest. But it got sidetracked, in my opinion. It did. So in Canada, these two trials are of the leadership Mm -hmm. of that convoy. So these two have been uh, not, they've been charged. And I forget what the charges were, but It's nothing like seditious conspiracy going on in the States with Enrique uh, Terrio getting 22 years. 22 years. So I'm not going to say there's anything even close to that in the Ottawa convoy, but there is some element in which they were misled. And I think a lot of the people in the United States uh, uh, riot against the Capitol got wrapped up like right. i said to you when this convoy was starting out mm-hmm. I, I i i almost said to you that they just been hijacked yeah that's just been taken over yep. i think the intentions could have been a lot easier gentler more palatable to the rest of the country if it had remained its first goal now in saying that the founders of it are pretty well uh not the most reputable reputable people yeah yep. so I may not really know what I'm talking about, but I did know they got taken over. And there was good intentions on a lot of people, but there was a lot of people just there for trouble. And they caused it. Yeah. So as this trial unfolds, we're going to find out exactly what transpired and what the government knows and what the charges, what the evidence will be of these charges. But some of them, you know, this is... When it all was unfolding in front of you and I, and we were exchanging emails of this thing, I wondered whether it was our Canadian version. So when I say Canada, we're one-tenth the size, one-tenth the mm-hmm. you know interest in these things, one-tenth every gauge of rebellion. So it was not going to be a January 6th. 
but it could have been, and I expected the truckers to drive up the steps of the parliament buildings. I thought they might drive a rig into the front doors or something like that. I didn't know how far they were going to take this protest. Yeah, I, well, I didn't either. I, I know I got, and it didn't take me too long to get totally annoyed because I don't, I don't like the idea of torturing a community uh, because you want to get a political part. And then, of course, we heard Hang Trudeau uh, change the government. I go, change the government to what? What do you want to change it to? And this lack of freedom, I'm going, we got all kinds of freedom. Look around the world, man. We're mm. free. And I don't believe in this propaganda that our freedom's being taken. We're collectively trying to work out ways to collectively live together. With that becomes rules and regulations. That's what happens when you're in a community. Even a small town won't just be left alone. You know, it has to be really a sparse town, and it's probably the family. The same family everywhere. So there's probably a dad in charge somewhere making sure there is no freedom. I don't know. Uh, but it got, it, it, I believe it got hijacked, and, mm -hmm. and I believe there was people there uh, with good intentions, and not just because I know some people who went there, but I mean, in general, they, 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 they thought it was unfair, and of course, if you believe that the vaccines turned you into some sort of a robot now, and you're owned by Moderna or wherever, uh, if you actually believe that, and you're not getting any inf other information, then I can see why you'd flip yeah, I think you got a couple of key points in that whole thing. One is the prevalence of misinformation in the convoy and those who threw their support along the convoy as it grew across Canada. So I'm thinking misinformation is a key element that will be discussed in the trial of Tamara Leach and Chris Barber. Yeah, but I don't think people weigh up. What, what are the consequences if it keeps going? We know the border blockage at, uh, at Windsor costs billions of dollars to Billions, Canadians. All yes. of us, billions of dollars. You can't let that continue on. And, and then we also know about the, uh, some of the Americans trying to come in uh, south of Alberta there or Saskatchewan, yeah, Coots, I think. Coots Bridge. Uh, Coots wherever Crossing. that is. Uh, and they, they were armed to kill. Yeah. So now it went from the peaceful Canadian no arms to... Almost getting an armory coming in. An armed in, insurrection. An armed insurrection. And the truth of the matter is, and I wish people could realize this, and we all got to try to realize this. Yes, there was Russian trolls involved. And yes, there was American politicians leaning far right that were involved, sending money, trying to cause crap. Because people, and there's, there are those anarchists, we know they're there. I actually know of someone who claimed to be an anarchist. They're troublemakers. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. And then wrap that all up with ed bored people wanting some sort of a cause to get Well, behind. it wasn't a Canadian yeah. winter. So if, yeah. you know, if you're a farmer yeah. and the crops are now under three feet of snow, yeah. what do you... Yeah, so some people were misled and misrepresented. And I do feel sorry for them. I, I read a comment on uh, Twitter, somebody saying, I felt like I was part of something bigger for once in my life so there's a sense that yeah, these yeah. movements do yeah. create a sense of camaraderie yeah. but it was in the sense of i don't want to say criminality but it turned rogue and out of control yeah and and then you get the, what i call the chest puffers involved we're going to keep you up community all night because we can and we're drunk now and we're going to sit around a fire and, and you know, uh, uh, put a hot tub up. We're good. We're, we, we decided to now take over downtown Ottawa and we're going to camp out. Mm -hmm. No, you can't do that. And yes, there would be mistakes, but who even thinks that's going to happen in Canada? So I... I think all the officials need to be cut some slack on how to handle this. That was the first time. The first time. And you're, you're dealing with uh, trucks becoming basically weapons, you might say. Uh, obviously, ways in which to keep people in the community up and wanting you dead, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you were making their lives miserable. They had nothing to do with your plight, nothing to do with your, but now you're taking innocence and you're starting to destroy their lives. All those shops that had to close. Do you think that they lost the messaging when they stayed longer than the weekend because the weekend was the permit and then they stayed yeah. did they lose the messaging battle then or did they lose the messaging battle when 
uh, Pierre Poiliev and uh, the interim leader of the Conservative Party came out, the CPC leader came out and had Tim Hortons donuts with the protesters. Everybody wants to score their political points and everything mm-hmm. else. You have you have people that want to be involved in a cause, something good, and that looked it to some. Yes. You have other people that just want to cause crap, and that's what they do. The anarchists, they were there. So were the good people. And then you have other people that they are frustrated because they don't have work, so they got nothing else to do. Might as well... Might as well camp out on the street somewhere and get drunk all day and, and, and sit in hot tubs. So you see at least three different kinds at of protesters. At least three, but there was more than that, too. Right. You had all the flags, different flags from different representatives all over the place. Right. You did see some far-right uh, flagging and uh, yeah. icons present. Well, this is the week when the two leaders have been charged and will be in court all week. And maybe next week, too, we'll see how long. And I don't think it will be long. And I don't think it might it will. just be a fine. And that would I would not be happy if it was just a fine, because I think there's some ne'er do wellness that the criminality of this thing. And I don't know to what extent the leaders are responsible for the criminality. But there is that seedy underbelly of dark money coming of Russian misinformation of American conservatism. Uh, coming into Canada through illicit means, and I want to be aware of that. We but have to be on guard. Pro the, Canada, the, we stand on guard yes, for these because there are the trolls in in Russia, China, United States. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're turning on ourselves. All kinds of different things. I guess it's for another show, but uh, you got to be on guard. You who think that the the other person's being led down the the path it might be you being led down and i gotta even tell myself that sometimes always look self first yeah. and say is the problem with me check your sources identify your sources where are you getting this information from and then uh, always check that stuff before you click click share and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. send check it out for yourself the jim and terry show all things canadian